And we're back. This is Asher with more War Sim, the Realm of Aslona, and we are just kind of a, having a chill time here. Um, I do have 20 lands, and I did double check something while I took a quick break here just to uh, make sure where my error was because I, I have all of these units, and I had very few defenders. Now, it doesn't look like a lot of these fancy bonus like Dusk Troll, Roving Fiend, etc., they didn't seem to be helping defend, so I should really be sending them on attack, but like, my soldiers, my bandits, my peasants, things like that, they, they are the backbone of my defense, and since I have 20 lands, like, if I send half of my soldiers again, if I send like 2,000 of my soldiers, I'll only have 100 per, so I need to be sending less soldiers, we'll see how that works. And you know what, um, what was that last screen? Did it say something here? Total troops combined. All right, let's also um, check our militia real quick here. Um, hire units first off. We'll hire, we'll hire peasants. That's actually a really good deal, so we'll hire all the peasants. It's a peasant sale today. Roving fiends, that's fine. We don't, we don't want them roving, we want them in our army. Okay. Recruitment upgrades. So more mercenaries. Bigger mercenaries. We have big militia. We'll upgrade. We'll upgrade some of the economy stuff here. I'm not too concerned about it, but. Alright. So next. We have 105 visitors. Apparently. People really want to visit us. I, I don't think I'm gonna like pluck through and do like a bunch of fight betting this year, other than just to see if I can overrun or overflow the uh, money if I've like really screwed myself. So let's explore first. There's there's so many places I want to go. Let's go west again. We have the money tree that I almost accidentally chopped down. So if we head further west, let's explore. We have Darkdale. Oh, that's good. Small city tucked into Songwood. Wow, small city with a bunch of people here. Okay, the market district. We have a brewer, we have a writer, we have a local merc post with a bunch of roving fiends. Nah. The guild hall, the tavern, the tavern side houses, the champion market, slap a goblin. Okay. Market and estates. You can buy two houses for a lot of money. They're being rented by local families for a thousand gold per year. You can buy these properties and become the new landlords, so that will um that will not pay off for another ten years. I don't know if I feel like making that kind of investment. Um Calf's legitimate goods with a Z looks very exciting. It says legit, so we know it's legit. Speak to the stall owner. I want to buy some, uh, I want to buy a fool's gold coin in a minute. So, the woman says, what? Who are you? My name is Kaf. That's Kaf with two Fs. What is a stall? It's a legitimate business. Where'd you find all the stuff? Nice try, not revealing my sources. Is this legal? Everything is legal unless they catch you, idiot. Um... I would like to know. Tell me about the fool's gold. Well, it's two half truths. It's a coin, and it's bought by fools. Fool's gold coin. Two half truths make a full truth. You know the rules. Well, I can't dispute that. So, no refunds. Cool. Very exciting. The Darkdale Brewer. Speak to the brewmaster. It's very exciting. That's a sweet beard on that brewmaster. Humble dwarf. Uh, Darkdale is ruled by this. Tell me about Songwood. I think that's what they call the larger woodlands around Darkdale. I don't know. Barely leave the brewery. All right. Let's get a drink. Of course. Enjoy. Oh, I'm drunk level plus one. Thanks. Fairly enjoyable. So that's what you can expect here. Okay, so... That's all that's all very exciting. I don't think the champion market's gonna have anything super exciting, especially when I push seven here. 
don't have available slots to hire a champion. So the nobles district or the folk district. Stop by some guards. Hold on, we need to check everyone that comes through here. A towering figure emerges from within. The guard post knows you. Because I'm a bird, the towering figure turns to the garden as if you were speaking to us. Says, Hand dear, do you know with whom you speak? The guard looks confused and squints. I have no earthly idea. This is Lucas the Quail, the king of Dust March. Yes, thank you. I am I am also legitimate. Uh, oh, my deepest apologies. Or it's sorry, I didn't know, I swear. Don't worry, Hand dear. Simple mistake. Go and patrol the upper wall for now. Towering Fury says, nice to meet you. I'm Nerad, the commander of the Dark Steel Guard. You're very welcome to go through the Nobles District. Come back here if you have any questions. Uh, let's see. The Gilded Crescent Tavern. Darkdale Treasury. Bronze Shield State. City Census Office. Let's go ahead. Let's go straight for the big keep here. You approach the Great Fortress. You are informed you may enter and speak with the king if you wish. I do. Gulag nods and says, how do you do? I am the king. What does your ruling entail? Looting that treasury for my own gain. Tell me about the history. I don't pay attention to the past. All I have is the future. One with even more gold. Well, that's a problem. Tell me about your subjects. Okay, you're, you're a jerk. And I would like to overthrow you. You enter the Hall of the Knights and they say, lads, at the ready, we have found the chosen. What? What? The Knights of Darktail rise up and declare you the Chosen One. They've never seen a bird before. They've never seen a quail, at least. You visit the old hall of the Knights of the Darktail, once a place where knights gathered in wait of a hero to lead them. Jesus Christ. We are the Chosen One. Trademark. Gilded Crescent Tavern, where we are still the Chosen One. How much drunker can we get? You pay 10 gold coins, and the pristine gold mug carries over to you in a red pillow. The ale tastes a bit stronger than you are expecting, but it still has a nice taste to it. Spill the last of your drink. Rumors of your foolishness spread. Uh, that's fine. We're not going to play rock, paper, scissors. Um, okay, we could, we could be here for a while, because there's a lot of really good stuff to explore here. Um, I was kind of hoping to be able to like trade with these guys. Maybe the Folk District has that, like the Mystic Mix Shack. Uh, we enter a hovel. Look, it's it's Stan Pines. You enter the hovel, find a small white skinned person with purple eyes. They nod you say, what do you wish? Who are you? I am Mick. Sorry, I'm not very good at describing myself. I know you want me to say the ruler of Dark Sail, but it's the people who run the place. Tell me about the song, what is nice. I think of this exposure of nature and birds of more calming elements. Nature have definitely rubbed off on the occupants of Darkdale. Generations of people who feel nice to each other fairly. It's interesting to see. Well, you have a king that um, is a jerk. All right, I help out where I can. That seems fine. Goodbye and be safe. That's a what a nice guy. Um, you could go to the brawl hole, but I think I'm gonna skip that. Let's let's go. Let's continue exploring. Wander aimlessly. Yes! Passed by a deranged looking farmer with who bloody and barefoot approaches your army, hands you a strange looking black orb. It's just a chaos orb. Which will do chaos things. Masterless peasants. They're looking for work. Now you got it. Songwood Graveyard. So, Songwood Graveyard is generally a quiet place where many in the past had been buried. Well, obviously, it's a graveyard. Most recently, those from the various settlements of the West prefer to use the funeral pyres to dispose of their dead. Okay. Harklin the Razorbeard died of unknown causes. Read a gravestone. Died fighting a scorpion. Died of an ancient disease. Died in the... Oh, God. Died in this graveyard. I love it. All right. Let's go to the arena. Your approach to see is currently an eight-man tournament. Oh, hail arena followers. I'm not good at giving speeches still, so glory, death, etc. Well, obviously we'll have to vote for Hathri the Bone Splitter. I think he has a pretty good win streak as champion. Let's bet 5,000. We got a lot of money in the bank. 
Looks like there was a pretty good amount of money that I could bet back here. So, we're gonna only watch fights I bet on here. So, Halfrey, looking pretty good. Halfrey. Says, you fight like a child. And then gets hit by a bottle. Presumably from a child. So, he does a strike in the dragon, the free hills. Wow, people really don't like him. Like, 60 some damage have come from just people hitting him. So, shouts, you knave, come here and die. Swing and a miss. All right, that's not a mess. Halfway the Bone Cyber stabs deeply in his body, leaving a huge gash. All right, so the crowd watches in horror and shock. Oh, wow. Halfway the Bone Sniper stabs. Dabber of the Free Hills in the heart, sending blood spurts everywhere. The crowd watches in horror and shock as Dabbern collapses and bleeds to death. That's what you literally paid to come here for in the arena. Don't get so shocked. All right. It's Grand Champion on a Grand Champion. Apparently, wow, Sir Mal. Not looking very good for you. All right, the crowd cheers for the victory. They just apparently don't want it to be too bloody. So, Nalferg, here we go. So minus 16 for now for it's gonna be a little bit of a closer fight. Oh boy. Um now Ferg Rudergerson gets a pair of quick strikes. Uh-oh. This one's gonna be pretty close. Halfway the bone snapper stops for a moment and nods. So he catches uh Nalferg with a quick hit to the head. And some members of the crowd hold up a banner with the words, We bet on Halfrey the Bone Snapper. It's me! I'm holding the banner. Oof. So he gets in a quick, sharp hit. And Nerfrog cracks him in the head. Oh, it's going to go down to the wire. Oh my god, he gets an impressive strike. Oh man, Happy the Bone Snapper swings down hard on a hard head strike. And that's it. Give me my money. The grand champion once more so we've earned more money all right like i said i just want to see if i have over oh let's check grand champion stats he has 10 wins and he's considered a rising force in the arena well considering who's the grand champion all right we could have him executed we could have him anointed Let's bet on a fight. So, Vagrant Beastly Armored Giant. We can bet 40000 again. So, apparently every year, somebody makes some money. And this, this may be a problem. I expected this giant to be a little bit stronger. <laughs> Fakes a sword swing to scare the gladiator, then laughs. Well, good gravy. I uh, nearly lost a lot of money. It's just like I planned it. All right, so we have 60000 We can almost buy the arena. Almost. Okay, punches. All right, so Goblin wins by default. Roving Fiend Warrior. We'll just do basic Gladiator. Don't have, like, easy pacifist to bet on. Look, that, that gladiator just died. Marson the Simpleton. That's not very nice. Hopefully he beats up a bandit. Uh, that's That wasn't according to plan. Alright. A Goliath Vampire ooh, versus a Beastly Armor Giant. Now, I'm going to bet 10,000 here. But I'm not as comfortable here because these are the two people that I tend to bet on with each other. So we're going to be here for a while. Goliath Vampire strikes the Beastly Armor Giant in the head with incredible force doing 100 damage. The Goliath Vampire effortlessly blocks the swing. And then it uh, does a quick sharp blow. And does a light but sharp hit on the um, Beastly Armor Giant. Uh, does it twice from an unexpected direction. Holds the blade high in the air to the crowd. And then gets an effortless hit. So it's so this Goliath Vampire, it's, it's having to do a lot of work. It's like the armored giant's a sponge. 
but the armor giant has not done any damage. There we go. There we go. Just a little bit of damage. So my breaking a bottle. This is this is perfunctory at this point. Overkill. There we go. So a little bit more money. Bandit or soldier. Come on, soldier. I don't know why you guys are both in the arena. Wow. Crowd Overkill. getting into it now. Of course I bet on my soldier. What are you talking about? Famous beastly armor giants. So I can bet 5,000 still. I wonder... Overkill. I wonder where I'm at in terms of money. Okay, you're a bedwetter. We're gonna, um, bet five here. Yeah. Bandit, Bandit's gonna win. Like, if your name that you go by is the bedwetter, that's, that's on you. Beastly Armor Giant. Let's try this. 50,000, just in case I get it up. Okay, so 17,595. So we're gonna, we're gonna clean you out this year, too. Overkill. Cool. Alright, so there's a limit. Alright, throne room. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to do that. Because I, I have a lot of money. Like I said, I could buy the arena and start upgrading it myself. Okay, buy the fruit for 10 gold, that's fine. Oh wow, you are visited by a hedge knight who says he has returned from his quest for you and has managed to kill a bandit warlord and brings you his head. Thank you. The bandits are not having a good time right now. Congratulations. Okay, accuse a man of smuggling. Okay, you got me. Ask the guard. There's some evidence that proves his guilt. To the dungeons. You're crying, but you, you at least were big and admitted to it, so you don't get the bad door. So tell me the advice. Explore you can. The areas dotted around the kingdom offer many interesting resources. Tell me, Okay, tell me another. Treat the throne room advisors as wise men. In return, you'll learn all the secrets they have to know. Tell me another. You have no more advice. Okay. Visit by a short woodsman who claims that one of your soldiers kicked him in the balls. Reparations are due. Oh, thank you. Yep. 11. 11 for a swift kick. That seems fine. Um, coin flip game. Mm -mm. If you weren't here for the beginning, we won We won the kingdom on a coin flip. That's the only way a bird's ever going to um, become king. So we, can, we have 99 in the bank. We can... Uh, we can let a little bit slide here brought you a painting of a cat on a fence which you found in his bird's nest i love it okay most you're visited by a homeless townsman who inherited some of gold and wishes to share it with you a little portion of it you're homeless dude that's very nice of you to share but um reparations yes please look at that suddenly nobody cares that we dropped a person down the hole uh, okay 30 per head Seven more soldiers is fine. 31 for uh, saying your daughter did something she might have wanted to do. Okay, well-known knight who wants to quest. Mm. There we go. Enjoy your quest. Here's a better design for your helmets. I want to look at the current design first. So there's, there's our weird design. I'm not super happy with it. Ooh. Um... Yes, we're going to upgrade our designs. All right. Hello, I'm sorry. I'm really nervous. I thought it would be better to tell you my first joke to my ruler. Listen to the joke. What is the unluckiest job in the whole world? The gravekeeper. He's even at work when he's dead. That was a good joke. Oh, thanks. I can't believe it. Our ruler is kind and we're lucky. So one more person just for fun. Savage, okay, you are visited by an insane townsman who says Savage watches ever true while rain pours down over the world. Um, get out. 
farmer has a dispute. My son found a bag of gold floating down a stream. Local elder claims it's his by right, and as I am his subject, surely this is robbery. Um, let's not give it to the elder, because that's someone saying, hey, that's my river gold. Okay. If we upgrade the throne room again, we're, we're, we're already getting a ton of visitors anyway. Um, let's see. We can reinvest some of this money into ourselves at some point. Obviously, we're going to um, go to the independent territories again. Got the Goliath Vampire Society again. We're gonna trade again. We're gonna hire troops again. Still no Blood Lords for sale. Um, we have 198. We can buy another 20. That seems fine. Look at all this money they have. They have so much money. I don't know what they're gonna do with all that money. We could request financial aid. All right. So the ore here, your head diplomat's uh, goblin speaker tells you that the diplomatic action with the ore is not possible due to their unintelligent and savage nature. But they do tolerate us. Good enough for me. All right, strength recognizing strength. All right, so anything else I want to do here? I think, once again, one of the most important things for me is that I just need to not send so many soldiers. In fact... It's only 50 gold per soldiers. Alright, that's fine. That's a, that's a little bit of reinvestment. Maybe maybe not the best move, but I really I really want to make sure I have defenses. It's like I get attacked once and I get super paranoid. All right, so bandits, let's roll. We're gonna invade the bandits again, and we're gonna send ourselves here. So zero. How many soldiers we're we gonna send? One thousand. Thirty. 100, 527, 39. Since these guys don't seem to be getting involved in the defenses, we're just going to send a whole monster mash here. I don't know who's going to control them, because I think these guys could literally just take out anybody. And Cowardly Fungus, 23. So we can give 40 in this battle. We could be planting some more stuff here, so watch the battle. Falling snow. Once again, Charge! invasion defense is here. Beneath the falling snow, your army goes slowly. The two armies clash. Alright, so we are really messing them up. Push through, you break through and deal a lot of damage. And we lost... We lost some soldiers, some grunts of bandits. So that was easy. Alright, so battle free battle report.com says we did good. And the roving community is attacking us. Really? Foggy skies and clouds. Only a 25% fail. That's terrifying. Alright, so the Roman community goes forward, gains some marginal ground. We kill some of their people, They we lose a lot of our stuff. We actually lost a Goliath vampire, which is uh, horrifying. But let's see here. We're just, we're just... Okay, that's the enemies losing stuff. The fog gets much thicker, but both sides continue fighting and soon chaos sees as much self-inflicted damage as against each other so the, I, I gotta get used to this because uh, obviously I'm not colorblind and there would be options to change this if necessary but green is stuff that benefits us I was kind of expecting the enemies to be in red all right so we get more fighting here more roving fiends killed and then we lost another goliath vampire 
so we are really we are really trying their best. Two forces clash and attempt to outflank each other. So we're uh there we go. That's that's the kind of that's the kind of win we need. So they're losing a lot of people here. They've they like sent everything after us. Uh-oh. The roving manages to form an effective pincer and overrun the enemy flanks. So we lost that's like the biggest losses we've had so far. Alright, the two sides fight. So we've we've lost a lot of stuff, but it looks like for some reason our um, people are properly defending. And then we perform an effective pincer and overrun them, taking out one of their fiend warriors. And we lost. I'm still really confused. The raiding forces steal a little bit of gold. So all that for money. All right. We lost 334 troops. They lost 716 troops. They had 100 troops remaining. Egghead, tell us more. 11 phases. The enemy was bigger than we were. One weather event. Thank you. All right. Kingdom reports. Makes you think of the Oct Octonauts. If you have children that have watched that before, then you know the Creature Report song. So it's Kingdom Report, Kingdom Report. We have 21 lands now. Trade's going good. Our bandits are pillaging other places, including the roving community, who I guess I'm going to have to deal with at some point. We got a lot of money from mines. A lone goblin joins us. We draw two knights, four outlaws. Um, we just lost all of our peasants, so... A raid took some money from us. We paid a bunch of wages. Oh, Stuart has failed to learn in his training. Your favor with the buyers and soldiers sells has faded. Blue pythons capture a small group of Dust March militiamen. Uh oh. Militia recruits a few new peasants. And then we saw that in the arena. All right, so not a lot of moving and shaking. We did make some money this year. All right, cool. Got time for one more year, so let's go ahead and um, let's do the recruiting first this time. Higher here, I wanna buy, not 303. Like this is, getting more peasants is the lifeblood. Um, 56 roving fiends. That's fine. Like I said, I'm just I'm just a little bit confused about what the breakdown is. I have 21 lands, so are all of my like extra people split evenly amongst those lands? Because I sent a lot of those people on battle, and then I guess they came back and defended here, so it's not like Kingdom of Dragons Pass where you send and then they're gone, and then you have to leave people. It's It's weird. I don't... I'd love to know more. Action ranking. We have bolstered the Goliath Vampire Society to be the richest, but we have the most lands and the most troops. The most soldiers, the most knights, and the roving community has the most densely populated crap. All right. Let's look at the diplomacy here real quick. The roving community who we're at war with and we'll never be at peace with because they're stupid. Um, obviously, these comparisons aren't... Well, it could, it could have been worse. I guess they just sent so many people and they sent them all... They sent over a thousand people to, like, one land. I guess that's how you do it. They're defeated... Defeated, we, d we s cut off their feet. So total lands, the bandits. Minus two. All right. 
Well, we should be able to finish the bandit business next time. Okay. We only have to pay 50,000 to bribe them to disband. I think we're going to disband them with our own hands. Exploring the realm. Let's do let's do west again. I'm feeling I'm feeling good about the west. That's not good. Notice a tree covered in arrows. Aimlessly. Camp of love. We found the love cults. Okay, I'm a little scared. All right, you visit the Camp of Love, a place nestled in a grand high tree deep in the Songwood. You hear laughter and many calm voices. You can hire them to increase public order. Well, I don't really care about that. Speak to their leader. What is the camp financial situation? Well, I've heard a great many people in our time, and luckily for us, those we have helped, but them dirt farmers are high nobility. I like to keep us fed, we receive donations often, however, on the occasion that times get tough. It can get pretty tough, but together we cannot fail. What's the purpose? Purpose is a valiant one, perhaps more than valiant. We seek to numb the world's pain to bring happiness to people as best we can in the world. We wish what it's like to show to be kind. The camp history. It started many moons ago. I was young and hungry. I came from the north. Wow, I, I read 23 reasons why you're supposed to be terrible then. But weeks of walking had led me to Songwood, looking for a quick meal. I picked a pile of mushrooms from outside the old hut and boiled them, and when I began eating, I felt a little sick. Worried that they were poisonous, I began panicking. Things grew sinister, the world darkened, and I was sure I would die right there. But in the sunlight pierced through the trees and showed me that I was not experiencing death, but birth. I fasted for several days, watching the creatures on the trails, listening to their wisdom, the wind and the rushing of the lake, and I knew that I that the love I felt now outshone all else in me, and that I needed to share my feelings with the world at large. So I traveled around, meeting other peaceful folk, be they veterans of war or lost young souls. People were skeptical at first. But over time, our influence has grown in Sogwood, at least, and has become largely peaceful. Well, that's cool. Ask about the leader. Me, I'm a farmer's son. I had always yearned for adventure and traveled to the south. My goal was to see the sand and the oceans of the southern coast, but I ended up in the west, where I settled. And tell me about Sogwood. It's always been a relatively peaceful place, but in my lifetime, I've seen the place really calm down. The Order of the Roses and Drakedale Guards have kept the place safe, and the rest of the woods are full of huts. Quiet place is a perfect location for a camp. Well, that's nice. Speak to a cultist. Smile, even if you don't feel like it. Force yourself. If you've ever had to fake it till you make it, it's true. Your mind is tricked into thinking you're happy and it makes it so. That is mm-mm, 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 No, sometimes you have to fake it till you survive. That's true, but just smiling even though you don't feel like it? Mm, no. No, 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 no. No, you need to be comfortable enough with yourself to express your feelings. It's 2021. Get There's no keeping it real or real gets wrong. I mean, there, there really is, but you don't just bottle that shit up anymore. Wall of Love. Exciting. The Well-Being Booth. Um, nah, we're not going to talk about my feelings. I'm a bird. Okay. Sue. We have some money. Let's see if we can get a little more money. All right, afflicted age old revolutionary or agitated gladiator? We'll go with agitated. You were pretty agitated. Overkill. All right. Goliath vampire versus bandit warlord. You bet your bottom dollar. We're betting on the Goliath Vampire. Overkill. Easy, easy money. Beastly Giant Champion versus the Dusk Troll. That's an easy bet too until it like blows up in my face. It might blow up in my face, but I, I believe in the Giant Champion. I mean, if you're a champion and a giant, and you're not from San Francisco or New York, there's, there's other giant teams, but... I mean, I have never seen anyone do 550 damage. Just saying. That's uh, that's ridiculous. Bandit versus Pacifist Gladiator. Okay, 29950. We're exploiting the economy! 
<laughs> so Bandit's just gonna sit there. Come on, stab him like a bandit. Whoa, gets hit by a fireball. Okay, I'm gonna have to have that gladiator or that uh, warlock Overkill. executed. There we go. Just a just a little hot there. All right, so we're not betting on any more fights. 143 visitors in the room. Hang on. Steward. Now, first off, your skill 186. General skill. Can we auto train you? I should have been auto training you the whole time. Because I'm not I'm not super happy with his skill level. Pretty happy with his skill level. Um, old crow kind of sucks, but. We'll auto train you too. All right, so we have a lot of people that are piling up in the throne room. What was last year's throne reports? Report. Ugh, I can't talk. Um, I earned a total of that much gold. Two knights. Got given a magical blue fruit. And public pending grew by eleven points. So you're still doing good. Now that reminds me, since we have so much money. Um, were the, was it in the West Magical Fruit Farm? Yeah, obviously, we got to visit the tree first. Okay, we're going to plant a new crop. Let's plant 20. All right, so we'll see how that goes. It's a little bit of money down the drain, but it's okay. Okay, troop counts real quick. Because we did lose some Goliath vampires, and that's kind of a bummer. And I think we've already bought all the peasants we can. Nope, we did not. Yes, we did. It's getting cheaper on the nights. But everybody's just training all the peasants to the point where I'm like, are my people starving? Because we have nobody growing food. Um, do we need to work on any laws? Taxes and subsidies. Banking tax. Lower the arena subsidy for lower max betting. I guess that's how we do it. Let's subsidize the militia. All right, we're not gonna tax people's taxes. Um, no, no, declare no enlistment. Stops peasants from being trained into soldiers, but I like that. Although that would help if like I have needed money. Mercenary policy. All right, social policies. No slaves to free. Crime policies. <sighs> Rehabilitation law. Reduces the bandit level. Well, that's cute. Uh, celebrations. Well, wishing day is kind of enough to take care of. Peasants work hard, enforce laws, force everyone to wear hats. Declared a different number of the year. Renamed the kingdom. That's I was looking for that option before. Lord and King. All right, that's fine. So I finally found that. All right, throne room. Since we got a little bit, let's see if we can get it down to a hundred. We'll do we'll do some of the steward's job for us. You're visited by a drunk knight, my king. I wish to better the realm. Yes, go have be fruitful, and multiply. Visit by a dirty laborer who says he's collected a gold coin from each of his friends. You have 21 friends. That's valuable, too. Visit by a small goblin. Without warning, he pulls down his breeches and begins to urinate. Nope. And nope, nobody cared. Mana claims to be a famous poet and wants to read you a poem. Sure. 
there is a great ruler who sits on the hill. The mightiest hero that no one could kill. No truer or better could ever live. And their name is, of course, Lucas the Quail. Well, didn't even get to comment on it. You're visited by a mud-covered blacksmith who claims to have come in possession of a magical fruit. Sure. We grow those now. Traveling Game Master. Play a popular game of sudden death. We haven't played this in a while. Oh, there's coin flipping involved, though, but it's also dice. So he gets a six because witchcraft. I get a six because it's a fair game. Look at that, I won money. I uh, don't want to play anymore. You're visited by a particularly short laborer who enters the throne room and says he has been sent by the village elder to bring all five boys of age. And he wants a finder's fee. That's fine. Next visitor, you're located by or you're visited by a farmer who says a dispute needs to be settled. I had a bet with a local loudmouth. Okay, pay the pay the gold. You're visited by a hedge knight, my king. I wish to better the realm. Yeah, go quest. You're visited by a stable hand who claims to have come across more magic fruit. It's because we keep it's because we keep growing it. You're visited by a smelly woodsman who wishes to join us. That's fine. Disgruntled soldier who says he's killed a great deal in your name. I think his pay is not enough. He asked for 23 bonus gold. Here, have a bonus. Visit by a well-known knight. You may also quest. That's right, I got 50 knights because we're the chosen bird. You're visited by a wise man who says he has some advice to share. There is a demonic presence in the black market. It has always slightly unnerved me. That is a very good bit of advice. I did not actually know that because I've never really messed with the black market. Maybe we should mess with the black market. A ruler who says ending slavery, is, goblin, ending goblin slavery is wise. Tell me another. Avoid fighting death eaters or soul eaters. If you find any, hide or crush them before they conquer you. I heard of an artifact called a scepter of the goblin god. It said to convince all goblins the holder of the scepter is a god. I can, you can stay in my court, though. Bring forward a man who's been accused of sleeping with skeletons. She was my wife. Um, get out of here. That's sad. Your visit by a budding gesture says a joke. How long do witches, how long to witches ride broomsticks on the cold nights? Just a short spell. That's fine. Didn't mean to cut off your laughter. Your visit by a young knight. You also may quest. Oh, good. A demon storms to your court and begs that you sacrifice a peasant of yours to allow the demon to die. He claims that he was cursed by a magical blade he discovered in the south. Sacrifice a peasant and let me die. If not, I will have no choice but to fight alongside the demon horde and see your lands crushed. Um, Trapdoor. The body disappears. Okay, well, I mean, we, we've already sacrificed peasants for um everybody else, but... If we get demons, we'll just take the demons head on. If you're visited by an old famed person who also wants to quest. So we have a lot of questing nights today. Unhappy beggar who wants to join. That's fine. Um, Happy the Bone Snap, the current grand champion. He wants to anoint, be anointed as a sir. Kneel. Kneel before your bird. All right. Congratulations. Earn through bravery, and hopefully you won't get cut down like our last grand champion. Secret stash of treasure. That's very nice. I will take that. You're visited by a young knight who also wants to quest. I wish I could see the status of the questing knights. Maybe it's maybe it's in there somewhere. You're visited by a bald gambler who claims that one of your soldiers kicked at his front door. Here, have some money. You're visited by a drunk hunter who wishes to join your army. Yeah! Better than to not, I guess. Claims he is here to pay respects to you. Thank you. Visit by a befouled craftsman who claims that one of your soldiers killed one of his chickens. Eleven, <laughs> eleven gold, both for getting kicked in the balls and to replace a chicken. That's a, that's capitalism. Traveling game master wants to play sudden death. I'll play with you too. I am the best. I I demand a rematch. Wow. Which rules are we doing? Are we doing like West are we doing southern rules where things are just terrible? Usually we start with more dice. Northern rules. So northern rules are just hardcore. 
It was by a dirty man who, well, the Northerners supposedly don't like fun, so. It was brought to you a gem encrusted fan that has family heroin for generations. Sure, I'll take your money. Um, visited by a traveler who claims that one of your soldiers stole an apple. Wow, four gold for an apple. That must be the best apple of all time. Uh, drunk knight. Yeah. Try not to die. Northern hunters joining a group of penniless monks who wish to give you all. Wait. Okay. Visited by a particularly ugly craftsman who claims that one of your soldiers threw rocks at his children. Yeah. That's the particularly ugly craftsman faints and falls to the floor, making a large thud. Your guards help him back up, and he smiles and leaves. All right, you're visited by an unhappy butcher who has brought you a painting of a troll on a bridge that has been a family heirloom for generations. I'll take it. I just, I just take all the things. I got just like a pile of treasures. You're visited by a craftsman who says he has a sum of gold stolen from an orphanage and brought half of it to you. Craftsman who says he has a sum of gold. You are in possession of stolen property. From, even if it's burning property. To the dungeons. Uh. So. Maybe you don't go into an orphanage that's on fire and steal money. I mean, would, how would you know where the money was? Hey, tell me a joke. What do you call a ghost jester? Dead funny. I, I like it. Seven more people. You're visited by a farmer who wants to join. Yes, please. See, this is what a lot of the rhythm of Warsome is. It's just kind of, you just get in the flow of it a little bit. An experienced guildsman who was doing repairs on his hovel when he found a hidden stash of gold. That's very nice. Visited by a crier who says a dispute needs to be settled. My job is to keep all the village up to date on the latest news and business. I do my job and I do it well, but one villager doesn't like it. He throws potatoes at me every time I speak. Okay, blessed is the name Lucas the Quail. Thank you. Visit by a western farmhand who has found a secret stash of treasure. That's a really big stash. You also want a quest. Well, the knight wasn't hurt again. That's from again. That's too bad. You're visited by a guardsman from the black market who says he has heard tales of your kindness. All right, I'm going to go pop into the black market real quick. Once here, you're visited by a farmer who has a dispute needs to be settled. His neighbor's dog found a coin purse and bore the two farms. Split the damn gold. Alright, um. Black markets. So. So you arrive here. Is guarded by an army of slavers and slave soldiers all around you see is rich merchants and petty lords bargaining here so if we attack them how many peasants do we want to send zero how many soldiers do we want to send how many knights do we want to send how many bandits how many goblin tribals how many berserkers how many Dusk Trolls? How many Roving Fiends? They're roving, after all. Roving Fiend Soldiers, 25. A goblin Thralls, 84. Or Goliath Thralls, 84. Goliath Vampires, 25. 5. 5. 22. And we would also like to send you and you, but not you guys. And we're gonna feed a bunch of the fruit. Um, okay, 49. All right, so we have a pretty big score. A skirmish could be a good way to thin the enemy's numbers. Raid a good plan. So I've done some spying and arranged some battle reports for you. So our battle score is really high. Like we have a few more people, but we have a much higher battle score. So let's crush these people. Oh wow! That's that is fascinating. So no new battle system. I'll have to ask about that. Alright. So you arrive at the slaver's fort. They seek purchase of slaves. It is now ours. We could hire them, we could sell. 
We could upgrade the slaver's fort walls. Or we could disband the slaver's fort. Let's enter the Great Hall one time. Order a slave brawl. Learn about the history of the slave fort. You enter the Great Hall. The room is full of slaves. Hard at work. Cleaning. Maintaining. Center room of black marble thrones sits empty. The slaver's fort was formed centuries ago by a rival slaver dens that operated across the realm, mainly in the east. Following a war between many of the slaver groups, the pact was signed whereby the Council of Masters from each clan would sit and thus war ended. The council chose the north to settle in as it was easier to defend and would attract less trouble than anywhere else. Over time, the council grew smaller until one man just held charge. However, through cunning and strength, the slaver's fort is now in your hands. Well, not for much longer. Bye bye Disband. Get out of here. Whoa. You declare it within moments... The fort is evacuated and the slaves are freed. Some view as a fuel for destroying a lucrative business, but the masses view as a freer of men and champion of the oppressed. For you know it, the fort is no more in the dust and the slaves are all free and we have a thousand new peasants. Hooray. Black market. We could attack the black market as well. Because apparently that was uh, the Slaver's Den belonging to us. The ruins of the Slaver's Den. We could attack Black Market as well, full of all kinds of people. Many strange, wonderful business groups. I need, I need to think about this a little bit more. Because we could definitely take out the Black Market. Which was technically what everyone was talking about and not the Slaver's Den. But I, I, think, I, think, we, I think we did a good thing here. Alright. I am going to go ahead and um, donate some more money to our Goliath vampire friends. Hire some more troops. We could hire 30. And how much money do we have left? Okay, we need to actually withdraw. Just in case we uh, screw up and miss the festival. So, 10,000 is fine. Alright. Let's go ahead and end the current year. Alright, Bandit Horde. We're almost there. We need to invade. We need to take a land. We need to choose myself here. Zero peasants, although we have many. We'll send 1,500 troops, 20 knights, zero bandits, 100 tribals, 38 berserkers. And once again, it's just something where maybe it's pulled from my uh, whole pool of soldiers here. Goliath Thrall, 84. Let's see if we end up losing some of these things here, like... 50 Goliath Vampires. We'll send zero here. Send zero here. We'll send 22 here. And uh, we can use 39. Just for even more battle score. Alright, so. Invasion Defense Forces again because of a harsh sandstorm. <laughs> Marches to meet. Several of your men turn around to reveal their backsides to taunt the enemy. That's good. Sandstorm takes a turn and you begin heavily hitting the side of the battlefield held by you. So, we lost some people right away from the weather. The two forces clash. And the sandstorm rages and actually takes out some bandits. Battle rages a group of small children climb atop a tree near the battlefield to watch intently. So, we're doing a good job. There's not a lot of bandits left. But we sure lost some people. Yeah! Alright. Bandits still don't like us. Man. We actually lost a uh, roving... Okay, we didn't lose any of our Goliath vampires. So that's a plus. And the roving community is attacking us. Yes. So of course we just get heavy rain. 
and they get an attack bonus here. Moments later, the snake has gone in its place. The army of the roving commander. Okay. The tall tree falls down hard but misses the fighters. So they're sending 700 troops again. So we have uh, 357 <laughs> troops defending here. More children watching. Okay. In the midst of the chaos, a small whistling sound can be heard. Suddenly a blob of slime crashes into the battlefield. It's unclear where it came from. Probably no, the children. Shh. No, you. You're being louder than me by shushing me. Will you both shut up? Hide behind some rocks and bushes to watch the fight. Two of them argue over being as quiet. Okay. So we're, we're actually losing a Goliath vampire, which is kind of shocking to me. But we are managing to take them down pretty hard. But we are one thing we're going to have to do is... <laughs> nice. Um, in the midst of the... Uh, in the midst of battle, someone farts. The smell quickly engulfs a small portion of the battlefield and ceases fighting for a moment while the men wait for the stench to disperse. Alright, so... They're having a pretty good time here. <laughs> so, slip and fall again. So, we're, we're losing from these forces because they're sending a bunch of people. I think it's still the right move to take on the bandits. Alright, a weather event. As the rain batters down, a large swath of soaked mud slides and takes out some more roving things. Right. See, this is this is the kind of ratio that I need. We have 105 people defending these lands and No! We're just getting killed here, so like Goliath Vampire again. Goliath Thrall. Like, those are some expensive losses. We have eight units remaining. We still have eight units remaining. Wow, the rain pours heavily down. Nearby water source overflows and flash flood sweeps across the part of the battlefield, turning it into an impromptu river. Wow, they lost 117 people because apparently roving fiends can't swim. And, as expected... They, so they wanted to steal some money. I guess that's why they're not doing so hard, but that hurts. We lost um, three Goliath vampires. That's an, that's kind of expensive. Um, enemies lost a lot of stuff, though. With every single one of his bandits dead, Fenor, the overlord, is nothing. Fenor is rumored to have fled to a foreign land in his time, heading a horde of ruthless bandits. He made enemies too great to be faced by any land man. The bandits alone piece of territory is now abandoned. Well, apparently he took care of them. Alright, so... I was expecting to have to invade one more time, but apparently we can't get any more popular than we did. So we got a raid, we got a raid. I got cats going crazy in the background. Our steward is no longer succeeding at training. We got a bunch of new peasants. I wonder how much of that's from the uh, freeing of the people. Yeah, this is, uh, is kind of exciting. So the ore attacked them as well. So everybody took out the bandits, which means next we can turn our focus on um, some other things. So I'll have to think about strategery and what I'm going to be doing next. But yeah, that's going to do it for this stream. Like I said, we have um, the bandits are no more. We've taken out one goblet tribe. Goblet. Goblin tribe. Um, the roving community is being a pain in the butt. But they... Um, so that may be what I go after next because they're currently attacking me. Don't want to deal with the Eeyore. Reform Blood Clan. Pretty good. I'll have to think about it. Because we, we have some options on the table between this and between the Northern Lands, where I went after the Slaver's Fort instead of the Black Market. 
I'll have to think about it. But that'll do it for this one. This is Asher with more War Sim, the Realm of Azlona. Lucas the Quail definitely, definitely making a lot of money. Making some friends, making some good public opinion. 22 lands. It's a good day. It's a good time. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you haven't already figured out my opinion of this game, it's really good and I highly recommend it. Even at full price on Steam, it's just that good. This is just one person that's made this and it's it's just a labor of love. You can, you can tell. It just shines through. But yeah, that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Let's put the end card on it and call it a night. You all take care. Bird noises!